Hi everyone, my name is Varun Singh Anya. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I would like to share my experience with you of me moving from Windows PC to a Mac after three decades. Yeah, that's a long time. I would like to share the challenges that I faced of moving from Windows to Mac, uh, what I had to relearn, whether it was easy or difficult, and whether the same could apply to you if you are also thinking about moving from Windows to a Mac. So before we get into all the topics, let's talk about the build quality of the MacBook Pro. The minute you hold it in your hand, it just screams premium, premium, premium. You know that it's something which is expensive, which is delicate, which is also robust at the same time. It just has a very amazing feeling in your hand. Right from the hinge, to the speakers, to the display quality, to everything. And like even the gesture, the trackpad, the gestures, it's just buttery smooth and you won't get that experience on any Windows laptop, hands down. Now, I won't say that Windows laptops are bad because there are many companies out there that are now building fantastic Windows PCs as well, with like a Razer or like the Surface Book. But even though they have stepped up their game, they're nowhere near to what Apple does with their devices. There are no creaks, it does not bend, there's no plasticky feel anywhere, except of course the keyboard, but that's a given. So I've been using Windows for 30 plus years, which is a really long time. And when I think back, there have been days when I've been so frustrated with the Windows system, it's not even funny. I would have to reboot the system very often, face that blue screen of death out of nowhere, right in the middle of your application or game, whatever like you're doing at that time. I would also have had to, you know, regularly format my PC from scratch, like format the entire disk, reinstall Windows and get it up and running just so that I can get that fresh, smooth feeling again. I would do this uh, formatting every uh, year and a half to two years and it, it was a pain because you would have to back up everything, reinstall everything and it's just a hassle. I've been using the MacBook Pro now for over six, seven months and I have not seen any issue at all, especially with the new M1, M2 chip that Apple has released now. There's no slowdown. I've never had to reboot my Mac. It's been on since day one. And when I'm done with the day, I don't even need to go to start and like shut down nothing like what I had to do in Windows. I just leave it on all the time, just shut the lid. And the next day when I'm ready to work again, I open up the lid and I'm good to go. The RAM management of the system is phenomenal. You don't see any slowdown. Everything is buttery smooth. And yeah, like many of you must be thinking that, oh, it's six to seven months is still new and this laptop will slow down eventually. No, I've had a lot of family members who are using Mac and none of them have had any issues. They've been using it for six to seven years. Yes, of course, the applications do slow down a little bit because as and when new applications get developed, they're more and more resource hungry. So they demand much more power, which the old systems do not have that capacity since it's an old system. But relatively, they've not had any issues at all. So let's talk about the keyboard on the MacBook Pro. The keyboard is just fine. It's amazing. Like uh, the travel distance is very short, so I feel like I'm typing faster, even though it may be the same speed as how I would have typed on a Windows PC. But since the travel distance is so short, I just feel that I type faster and it's just, it's like top notch. I've never had a keyboard with this kind of experience. On my Windows PC, I've had like the Surface over here. Before this, I had the Dell. Before that, I had an HP. The keyboard was good, it wasn't bad, but it's nowhere near an Apple keyboard. The typing experience on this is just sublime and I am very, very happy with it. Coming to the next point, ecosystem. Every company out there wants to lock you into their own ecosystem so that it becomes very challenging for you to move on to any other device besides what they're producing. And this is exactly what Apple has managed to do slowly but steadily with me. 
it started off with the iPhone and then I got the iPad, then the MacBook Pro, then the Apple Watch, AirPods, etc, etc. I know you must be thinking like, oh, Apple is that evil company where they want you to spend all your money and get all the devices. Well, I can't complain because the ecosystem just works. It's flawless. It's smooth. It's it's just it's just right. If I copy something on my Mac, I can paste it on my iPhone or my iPad without any issue, without any delay. It's instant. I can move my photos from one device to the other via AirDrop. It's so fast. It's so convenient. It's just unmatched out there. And the ecosystem is something that you have to experience. Once you do, you're not going to leave the system either. So moving on to the next point, let's talk about Spotlight Search. Spotlight Search is something that I was really intrigued by. Every time I saw my friends using the MacBook Pro, this was before I owned one. And I just found it very, very interesting because all you have to do is just press command and spacebar and the Spotlight Search is right up there. You can type anything into it. You can type any math, it'll give you the answer. You can type any conversion that you want, it'll give you the answer over there. If you're looking for any document, any program, any any file, it'll just find everything on your system. And it's so easy. That wasn't the same in Windows. I would have to like, you know, there's like run command over there, but that's only for applications. You can't do a system wide search for anything on your system. And Spotlight Search is just, just better. It's just better and it just works very well all the time. It's something that once you get used to, you don't want to use anything else and you want Spotlight Search to be there. And that's been my experience with Spotlight Search. Next, let's talk about the continuity. So continuity is also a part of the ecosystem that I had spoken about earlier, but I would like to elaborate a little bit more. If I'm using my iPhone and I'm on a FaceTime call and I sit down on my desk and put on the MacBook Pro, I see a pop-up, continue the call, continue the FaceTime call on the Mac. I just click on it and it just continues on my Mac. I can use my iPhone's camera as the primary camera so that it's even more clear and it just it's just seamless. So you know like there are a lot of transactions that people do today whether it be it banking or if you're logging into a website or anything that requires an OTP. Every single time you're on your laptop be it a Windows or a Mac you need to enter that OTP to authenticate whatever you're doing. and. Ever since I've moved to a Mac, and since I'm on the Mac, I'm using this built-in Safari, all the OTPs that come on my phone, it just pops up over there. I don't need to even take out my phone, look at it, and type in the OTP, nothing. It just makes work more uh, seamless and easy. And that's just been a lifesaver because it saved a ton of time and headache as well. When it comes to phone calls, when I'm using my Mac, I leave my iPhone aside. I don't even need to look at it so that I, I don't get distracted. And if I'm getting a call, I can answer it on my Mac and talk as normal. And it's just easy. So if I'm sitting in a public area and I get a call and I want to answer it on my Mac, I just connect my AirPods. And the minute I put it in my ear, there's a pop-up again on the MacBook Pro where it says connect your AirPods. I don't need to go into Bluetooth settings, search for my AirPods, etc. It just works. So the continuity is very, very good, very smooth, and it just makes life easier. Now let's talk about a few of the disadvantages or the points that irritate me or frustrate me a little bit because, you know, after being set for 30 plus years on a Windows system, moving to the Mac has been slightly challenging. So let me talk about that. The first point I would like to talk about is when you're multitasking, if you want two windows to be right up there, it makes it so difficult because you don't have a snap on like how you have in windows you can press the windows key and the right or the left arrow key and it would just snap that particular window or application to either the left or the right side you don't have that on a mac it's not there 
and even if you do have two windows you have to manually pull it and stretch it and it takes a lot of time and it's just irritating yeah there are hacks you can install third party applications i personally use rectangle with that you can set like shortcuts on the keyboard and uh, you can use that for it but i i don't understand why isn't it an inbuilt feature it's a, such a it's such a basic thing which everyone uses and it should have been there built in but that's just another learning thing that you have to do when you're moving to a new uh, system you search for an alternative and then you implement it but i feel that it should have been there inbuilt the other thing that really frustrates me is not having a backspace key so the macbook pro has just the delete button so it can only delete backwards it cannot delete forward like you know in in your windows there's a delete and a backspace button i don't know why that is like it's basically it's just muscle memory because you know 30 plus years on a windows pc you have that muscle memory you know like if you want to delete or backspace on the macbook pro i had to relearn that i had to retrain my muscle memory and yeah now after a couple of months it doesn't seem like a big deal but if initially when you do move to it it does feel like a big deal applications which are available on both platforms like let's talk about microsoft excel microsoft excel on the windows and on the mac is of course the same but the keyboard shortcuts aren't i use a lot of excel in my day to day life and uh, my hands were set on the keyboard shortcuts of how to auto sum etc etc and when i move to the mac the, it's just not there i don't i don't have that key available and i have to literally go and press the button with a mouse or the trackpad and that's one thing that till date frustrates me a little bit but it's not a deal breaker the other issue that i am facing is that you know in windows when you're on an application and you press the cross button on top it closes the application period like it's closed but on the mac if you press the red button which is on the left side not the right it's like everything is opposite on the system if you press that cross uh, the, uh, no if you press the red button it just minimizes the application it does not close it if you want to close the application in the macbook pro you have to command and q and then select that application and it will quit it but i i don't know why like it should have just been there like uh, windows or maybe i just i'm used to that so that's why i find this little annoying but it's something that you can get used to over time the next thing that also annoys me a little bit is not being able to open applications or files with the enter key like in windows if i move to a particular uh, file using the arrow keys on the keyboard and I, and that gets highlighted if i press enter it opens it uh, on the macbook pro it does not open the application if i press enter it goes into a renaming state like it wants to rename the file or the folder or the application which is just strange if i want to open it i have to press command and o let's talk about the main reason why i decided to move from windows to mac well to be very honest it's the apple silicon the m1 the m2 when m1 was announced and the performance was displayed on the apple event it just blew my mind the amount of power that this laptop has in such a small form factor it's just unbelievable you can edit videos which are 4k 8k without even the fans kicking on In my 6 to 7 months of ownership I've never heard the fans even kick in which is just strange like such a small system in such a sleek form factor has so much power and such amazing battery life it just blows my mind and that was the main reason for me to move to the MacBook Pro I was tired of the battery life on the Windows system even though this is a surface uh, book and uh, the battery life of this is relatively better than the others out there it just wasn't enough if i'm traveling or have to go to a meeting there are times that i just carry the laptop i don't even take the charging brick with me because i know that okay it's got 80% of battery that's more than enough for the entire duration of the day 
and having that kind of flexibility is great because you're not tensed about you know packing the bag oh my god i forgot the charger what will happen if the juice runs out no it's just so easy this was the main reason why i took the plunge and moved from windows to mac and overall i must say that i'm extremely satisfied with my decision and if i would have had to do it again i would that's it guys like this was my entire experience of moving from windows to mac and if you're also thinking of moving from windows to mac i hope that i've been able to help you make your decision easier and if you like the video and you're here till the end please like and subscribe because this is my first video on youtube and that will really help me out and will show me your love see you next time